Hey, I'm Brienne, and I promised it. There were some difficulties, but here it finally is. This is the gear that I use to film my YouTube videos. Now let's start with arguably the most important piece, the camera. I use the Sony a6300 body that shoots 4K at up to 30fps, though I shoot 24, and 1080p at up to 120fps for some nice 5x slow motion that I maybe need to use more. You can check out my review up here, but basically I like it because it's super compact, so if I just want to take some photos, I don't have to haul around a big camera, but it still produces super sharp 4K, because it takes the whole 6K image of the sensor and scales that down to produce 4K. Now what is as important as the camera body itself is the lenses that you put on it. I use the kit lens for shooting A-roll because of its 16mm focal range, it's a 16 to 50mm lens, but it only has a variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6, so it's really not as nice for shooting in low light or getting nice depth of field. But it's not really an issue for shooting A-roll because I do light my A-roll shoots pretty well. But its focal range does make the lens pretty versatile and it's also super small, so it's the lens I mostly use when I take the camera out for photography, because it enables me to put the camera in my jacket pocket for example. But for b-roll I do use a different lens to get nicer depth of field and better low light capabilities, an f1.7 35mm lens from a company called Maike. It definitely produces some nice b-roll because of the wide aperture, and because when I'm shooting b-roll I'm mostly behind the camera, it also doesn't really matter that the lens doesn't have autofocus. And that enables it to be very cheap. It's under 100 bucks and it's a really good deal. I'd really recommend a lens like this. But that being said, a more versatile single lens would definitely be the Sigma 18-35 that would replace both of these lenses. So I'm looking at that for the future, but it's really expensive, so again, a future investment. Now what is equally as important as the video quality is the audio. For audio, I use a Rode VideoMicro microphone that is really well built out of aluminium, so it's probably not going to break on me soon, and it does have some nice audio quality for a pretty low price at around 50 bucks. It also attaches to the camera directly, so I don't have to use an external recorder, that saves me a lot of time. But I do still have an external recorder, the Zoom H1. It's very versatile, because you can also use it as a second microphone on show floors, for example, to hand to another person and it also records the audio directly into it, so I don't have to use a phone that usually has some bad audio quality through the 3.5mm jack. So when I'm only recording voiceovers, that really helps me out, because I don't need to record audio along with the video that I would scrap anyway. Now what shooting Sony means for me is that I don't have a flip-out screen on the camera, so I have to use another camera monitor. I use the Tarion X7S camera monitor, it's some Chinese company, these monitors are available from a bunch of different companies under different names, but it's essentially the same thing. It's a 7 inch monitor at 1920 by 1200 and it's also IPS. Now that is pretty huge because it's only 150 bucks and that sounds expensive but it's really a steal if you know what other camera monitors with these specs can cost. It has a really sharp image which colors you can also tweak to your liking with the settings. And there you'll also find nice features like image flipping so you can see yourself the right way when you're filming yourself or focus peaking, which is really helpful. But the autofocus of the A6300 is super fast, so I don't really need to rely on this for A-roll shoots, but for B-roll it is pretty nice because the A6300 doesn't pass on the focus peaking that it has when you record 4K. Now of course, to attach all of the stuff to the camera, one cold shoe mount isn't enough. So I use a small rig camera cage for the A6300 to attach the monitor and the microphone to it. It also protects the camera, so should it ever fall down, it's probably going to be fine. And it also has a nice handle, so you can take around the camera easier with all of this stuff attached. But of course, there are also some smaller accessories that go into making all of this work, mainly batteries. I do have some extra batteries from RAV Power for the Sony A6300, because one battery is usually only enough to shoot B-roll and then another one for A-roll. So I do have a kit of two that also comes with a charger, so I can charge the batteries outside of the camera and always have some ready when I need them. I also have some batteries for the camera monitor, because it doesn't come with any, but also doesn't work without them. I have a kit of Sony F550 batteries that is from some Chinese brand, and I feel like they're probably going to blow up at some point because they're plugged in all the time in the corner of my room. So if you want to pick some up, you should probably also get a kit from Rav Power that I was unfortunately not able to find on my local Amazon. 
I also have an extra micro HDMI cable from Amazon Basics that connects the camera to the camera monitor. I don't really know why the monitor only comes with mini HDMI because pretty much no camera uses that anymore. Now next to the battery that I mentioned before in the camera is of course the SD card. I use a SanDisk Extreme micro SD card at 128GB. That is even enough to cover whole shows with one SD card, so it's basically the only SD card I use. And I use a micro SD card because my laptop doesn't have a full-size SD card slot. Yay for the lack of ports. Now I would probably recommend a different SD card if you were to buy one, because there are 128 gig cards from Samsung that are as fast as this one that are half the price. But you do need a U3 card in order to record 4K at 100 megabits. That's something you have to bear in mind. Now let's talk about the tripod that this whole contraption sits on. I have a tripod kit from Noor that is made from carbon fiber, so it's super light but still sturdy, and it also gets really tall, which is important because I'm a pretty tall person. But it still folds up super compactly, so you can take it to show floors, which is also nice because it does transform into a monopod. The kit does come with a high quality aluminium ball head that is super compact, but still enables some nice smooth pans. But what I use for the nice smooth B-roll shots that I do is the included fluid head, that has smooth pans as well as smooth tilts. And of course I also have a rubber band on the handle to make the pans even smoother. Now this tripod with all of its benefits and the two heads comes in in a kit for only around $100 slash euros. So for that it's a real tip, I'd really recommend this tripod kit. Now the last thing that goes into shooting video that isn't attached to this whole tripod camera contraption is of course lighting. And I guess this couch, but that's probably not that interesting. I use a softbox kit from a company called SD, and it's really not that high quality and it's a hassle to set up, but I guess you can't really complain because it does produce some pretty nice lighting and it's only 50 bucks for a pack of two, even though it does feel like it's going to break every time I set it up. But those are basically all the things that go into shooting these videos. If you want to pick any of them up, as always, I'll have links in the video description. And in case you want to know what I edit my videos on, I'll have my setup tour linked up there. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press, and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.